All right. So we've got some questions uh, regarding how to communicate to your members. Um, seems like everyone's got a target date to open up um, either in the near future or in a mid, mid run. So what should you guys or what should we be communicating to you, our members? Um, like kind of the basic questions, how, what, when, all that good stuff. Yeah. So I think one of the big things would just be, we should have been constantly communicating with them the whole time. Right. So I think it's maybe not so much of a, uh, of a when in this case as it is just a shift in messaging. Um, so if you're constantly communicating as, as that message shifts, I think a big part of it is beginning to plant the seeds as far as what you're considering because I don't know that there's, and I guess it also depends on the state, right? And like the, where you're at, but like if you're, if you don't have firm rules on what you're doing because the state or local government hasn't given you anything, like you can have 10, you can have 20, we're going to based off your fire code. Like there's so many, so much up in the air, then you should at least begin saying like, these are the things that we're considering. These are the, 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 the thoughts that are going through our head and start implement or start communicating those. So what about like the, the interval that you communicate to your members and at through what channels? I like weekly. Um, Zach, how do you feel? You know, yeah. I know that you I think weekly leading up to the week of opening and then it should probably get a little bit more frequent. Um, like I think the three in the five day period leading up to your opening date, let's say you're opening uh, on Monday and right now it's Friday. Um, I would send out an email both on Friday evening. Hey, just so you go, no, beginning of next week, we're back in action, blah, blah, blah. And then again, Sunday night, Hey, get ready to come into the gym tomorrow. Not spammy, but just like, um, something that keeps it top of mind for people. And, and my, my system for communication on a, on a high level like this for members has always been give give the members the amount of information about your plan that they need to know for two things. One, in order to be successful and two, in order to feel confident in you um, or to, to have their trust uh, in you. And, and what that looks like is you have your plan all laid out for your opening or you're coming back into business or whatever it is uh, that your state is allowing you to do. And now you have to look at that plan from the lens of, of your customer. So look at that, look through that lens, be like, okay, what does the customer need to know? And what can I share with them that uh, will, will keep a high level of trust in, in me as, as their leader? Um, and then that's where your messaging should be based around, in my opinion, because uh, Nick, I'm sure actually we've all probably been there where we may have like overshared information or given information that probably wasn't necessary for, mm -hmm. um, for our members and it may, it may not have done harm then, but it's like, it, it's just one of those things that you don't want to overshare right? because then people start asking questions and they give their input and all this other blah, 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 blah. And you don't want to deal with that. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that it's, um, um, it's important not to put your own, um, I don't want to say, uh, your own maybe confidences in this, in, in this scenario into your, like your own biases. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I'm confident that this is nothing. Right. Therefore I'm going to treat it like it's nothing when I communicate to my members. I feel like that's a really bad idea. Like, yeah. right. And, and the, and the survey that we did actually confirmed that, that even though like the vast majority of people are going to come back in right away, it doesn't mean that they'll stay if they don't feel like you're taking it seriously. Um, right. and your new leads, like your prospects, you know, at some point we, when we open our doors, hopefully you're already at least like, kicking around so maybe some sales concepts now but like as you open your doors and we get new people coming in like everything's going to shift fundamentally so yeah. when they go to a restaurant when they go to a grocery store and they're surrounded by people still wearing masks and people still wiping things down but then they come into your gym and everyone's like hey you want you want a bite of my banana like here bro let's share like that'd yeah, be a big touch problem, you right in this air yeah. squat yeah exactly right right so i think a big part of the communication is just that um um making sure that you're addressing everyone's maybe fears respectfully, even if you don't share those. Yeah. I mean, it's yep. really just coming back That's down great. to understanding who you're talking to. Yep. Um, Absolutely. The other question to this was, um, you know, what mode of communications are you guys using? Um, do you stick with one? Do you try to overlap and have some redundancy? Um, what are you guys using? 
just email, text, direct text, yeah. Facebook? So we'll email and text um, uh, the same message through both mediums. Um, it may end up being a blog post that we just text out so that, you know, they click on it and see the whole thing. I think part of this is like power and images. And so we're also going to do uh, some video. I'll probably video TJ talking through what class structure looks like, what, what our ask is like, make sure you wash your hands before, wash your hands after all that other good stuff. Um, but even just like, if you're going to make a blog post, like a picture of your, we use Zogix, like they're the tall, like stainless steel trash cans. I've got the wipes, the disinfectant wipes in the top, like a picture of that, like they, pictures worth a thousand words. Right. And if you are the slightest bit hesitant about going into an environment, but yet the stuff that they publish shows cleanliness, it shows caution. It's so much better than asking them to read 17 paragraphs. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I would, um, so I would put out two forward facing, uh, kind of one to the members and then one to like the general public and the, the blog depends on how you've utilized your blog in the past. Um, if that is more of a marketing tool or more of a, a messaging system for your members, you'll have to make that call. But like, I would definitely be putting out a, a post on like our Facebook private group for our members only group. And that post would probably be, be a video of me speaking to them, right? Like mm -hmm. a, like a, like a community address, right? Stay of the union type posts leading up to the opening. Um, and then I would also send like a text version, uh, through email. And then I would probably make some posts that are more, um, forward facing to the market, like, like on our business social media pages, like our business Facebook and our business social, um, uh, Instagram and stuff like that. That wasn't the, the, the voice wasn't directed towards our members, but just letting everybody know, Hey, this is we're reopening and this is what we're doing. So again, um, two slightly different messages. The voice is going to be different because the audience is different. Um, but the frequency, um, I'm always going to take care of my members first. So I might more frequently talk to them, but that doesn't mean I'm ignoring the other side. Uh, and, yep. and to Nick's point, video and pictures are, going to be more powerful in this because it's going to, it's going to relay connotation, inflection, the voice, intonation. Um, and, and those are the things that people really communicate with body language. Um, so I think those are your, your best tools for this situation. There, there was a, there was a gym here in Kansas city, um, just a ways away from ours. Here, and, uh, the owner did a video that was targeted to the, the governor lobbying to get gyms back into phase one and allow them to open. And he was explaining on all the precautions that they're taking video of like the inside of his gym and how the floor was taped off. And I'm literally watching this thinking like, Oh, I'd absolutely train there. Like that's, that's yeah. clean. It's organized. He's structured. I mean, and so it wasn't even directed at me. And I, and I, and I, I agree with Zach. I'm not saying I don't like, I do think there should be two different voices, but I mean the video that I saw and it was quick and to the point, I thought, damn, let's go. That's powerful. I think, <laughs> yeah. um, that's, Zach, that's you nailed good. it with you. If you create the same content in three different voices, two or three different voices speaking to two, two or three different audiences and sectors, um, all that does is, is it validates and, and reinforces your message. So right. if I'm a member, I can see what you're saying to the public. And it reinforces that, that message. It's not just, you know, this one single, um, sole focus message, but this is what also looks like to the members or to the general public. And it just, I think instills a lot more confidence if you can hit it from different angles. Um, That's a great point. Absolutely. Man, this mm -hmm. is good. This is really good. Um, so a couple of big takeaways, make sure first you are communicating to your members. Um, that's, that's your bread and butter. That's your community. Um, make that a regular interval, whether it's, you know, twice a week, once a week, make it something that they can expect to hear from you or see from, see something from you or your business, um, at a regular interval. So there's, there's no gap, um, between when they last heard from you and then now they're just kind of waiting around like, Hey, what's happening? Um, and to Nick's point, um, you know, try to make this as, as engaging as possible. You want to try to capture someone's attention. Um, and that's not going to be the same for every single person in your gym. So you might have to include some videos, some photos, a blog, um, direct text, right? And now's the time, especially because we can't be around each other physically, um, as much as we would like to, you have to utilize all the different tools available to you. Um, 
So awesome, Brad. Thank you for, uh, for that feedback. I think what we can do is really expand on that. Um, our plan is to release a reopening guide, reopening checklist guide. Um, and part of the big part of this will be communication. Um, to really instill, you know, try to gain back the trust, not from your, just from your business, but um, just the, uh, how safe people feel in general, right? And that part of that is going to be how well you communicate what you're doing. Um, well, awesome guys. Well, thank you for uh, your contribution today. Uh, with that, we will catch you, you guys next week. All right. See you guys. All right. Later guys. See you later.